When it comes to antennas, one of the fundamental types is the dipole. And when it comes to connecting the antenna to something else, the most common type of transmission line is the coax. While these two can work together, it's not a match made in heaven. Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about a type of antenna that is a derivative of the basic dipole, or well the monopole, but which manages to fix the antenna to transmission line mismatch problem, the ground plane antenna. So the basic issue that we have is that the dipole is a balanced structure with an input impedance of about 73 ohms. And most common coax cable is unbalanced and has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. To get the proper matching in between these two structures, you need to solve both the impedance value mismatch as well as the balance type mismatch. One of the very first antennas that I built as a licensed ham operator was this thing. Fundamentally, it's a quarter wavelength monopole with a ground plane made from some rods. But the thing that I found most fascinating about it was that it solves the antenna to transmission line problem. This can be built to have exactly 50 ohms and it's unbalanced. So it perfectly fits the coax. To understand the ground plane antenna's properties, we need to see its relationship to the two fundamental structures between which it stands, the balanced dipole and the unbalanced monopole. So in theory at least, the monopole needs an infinite ground around it, but in practice this can be reduced. You can get similar results with even a half wavelength diameter disk. This idea can be taken one step further and the disk can be replaced by a set of radials. And well, the behavior will still be in the same range, similar impedance and the same balance mode. The final important insight is to see that the actual resonance impedance value is based on the angle in between the two elements, 90 degrees in between the central radial and the ground gives roughly 36 ohms, while 180 degrees with the dipole gives roughly 73 ohms. And well, 50 ohms is somewhere in between these two, and thus can be obtained with an intermediate angle. And this is the ground plane antenna. It's an unbalanced monopole where the reference is built from rods, and they are sloped at an angle so that the final impedance is 50 ohms. The common way to build such an antenna is with a central element of about 95% of the length of a quarter wavelength, and then the sloping radials placed at 135 degrees are a bit longer at about 1.05 times the quarter wavelength. Four radials are common, but even three will work, and well, more is better. Now, it's important to remember that all these values are approximate. Both the angle and the lengths are impacted by the actual build and materials used. You'll find a bunch of online calculators that help you with the numbers though, but starting from these numbers, you will still need to make adjustments. So as with most antennas, it's a good idea to build them a bit larger than needed, and then measure the exact resonance frequency that you're getting using something like a VNA. And from here, you will need to make small adjustments. On the one hand, you need to adjust the length to get the right center frequency, but you also need to adjust the angle to get the right impedance value. You could use adjustable rods or some wire and then just cut them the size. From a radiation pattern point of view, this is considered a single polarization omnidirectional antenna. And we can quickly check this in the simulator. So here I modeled a basic ground plane that has four radials. And the slope of the radials is 135 degrees in reference to the z-axis where the central element is. So in free space, its resonance frequency is approximately 408 megahertz and the resistance value is 55 ohms. So even though I use the values for 434 megahertz, it's a bit off. But to some extent, this is normal. In real life, you will always need to adjust things a bit. Anyway, the last thing to observe in this screen is the gain. So it is slightly lower than a dipole, about 0.29 dBs lower. Finally, looking at the radiation patterns, 
we can see that in free space at least, we have a very nice donut shape with the antenna being omnidirectional in the plane perpendicular to the central element. And while the polarization is purely vertical. If we turn to horizontal, there's absolutely nothing. As with most antenna types, size or operating frequency is not a limiting factor. You will find ground plane antennas, both large, this thing on a tower I saw has its elements almost 2 meters in length, and in contrast, I got this little thing to work on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So as long as you can build it, it'll probably work. As long as you have an impedance analyzer and a pair of pliers, you can build and adjust this type of antenna to work on almost any band. It's simple and quite easy to build with no special tools really needed. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you might want to check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.